Welcome to Strange Familiars. How are you doing tonight, Chad? Actually, excellent. <laughs> Very good. Well, Chad's here tonight because we're going to talk about this strange walk we had in Glenrock. Against my will. <laughs> You're here against your will or you walked against your will? It was both. Both. <laughs> he held me at gunpoint, or actually it would be staff point. Staff point. <laughs> Before we get to that, I'm going to talk with Kevin, who's got a story about Bigfoot in Glen Rock for us. But even before we get to that, I want to thank Strange Familiar's patrons. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for your support. If you like what we do here on Strange Familiar's and you want to get more content and help us make the show, you can become a patron at Patreon. It's patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. All of our patrons get the weekly episodes commercial free, plus full Extra episodes exclusive to our patrons every month. We promise at least one. Sometimes we do more. In October, I did three. So lots of extra content for our patrons. Again, it's patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. There's also an option on Apple Podcasts. It's called Patron of the Strange there. And you will get the weekly commercial free shows and the extra content as well. All right, let's go ahead and get to my interview with Kevin. He's got these stories of these encounters around his girlfriend's farm in Glen Rock, right outside of Glen Rock, from 1978. And as I told him in the interview, 1978 was a big year in York County for Bigfoot. I don't know why. Lots of Bigfoot in 1978, all around York County. So when he told me the year, it was like, ding, 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 ring that bell. But it's a pretty interesting story, Class B stuff, but then he did actually end up seeing something during the day as well. During the day? Yeah. That's a rarity. Yeah. So let's go ahead and hear Kevin's story, and then Chad and I will be back, and we'll talk about our walk on the rail trail. I'd like to welcome Kevin to the show. How are you doing tonight, Kevin? Hey, I'm great. How are you? Really, really good. I'm super excited to get your story. You contacted me after our... uh, Faust Distillery episode when I mentioned some Bigfoot sightings around Glenrock and you mentioned this event or series of events that happened in 1978. So you just walk us right into it. This is just a little, I guess, a little south of Glenrock where this happened, right? Yeah, on the on the road toward New Freedom. If you're from that area, you probably know the road I'm referencing, but it was June 78. Uh, interesting we my girlfriend at the time her parents lived in the country and of course there was no light pollution so uh, at the bottom they had this really high porch with a really high stair stair step that went up to it and we'd always lay at the bottom and just look straight up at the sky you could see millions of stars it was really cool we did that repeatedly i mean just something we did periodically and i knew it was a saturday night because her parents were watching love boat (laughs) <laughs> she didn't like love boats, so we were outside looking at the stars. And uh, I'm not sure that that's relevant or not, but it's just one of those key things. I remember why we were out there. And at first, what I I thought I heard was like a deer pawing around the hillside, which is if you know I'm laying on the ground is basically off to my left, probably about 10 o'clock from the house in a northwest position. But it was loud, and you know, granted, I was a, you know, still in my late teens at that time. But I had deer hunted. I'd heard deer pawing before, and it sort of sounded like that, but different. I didn't pay much attention to it at the time, and then it just seemed to become abnormally loud at that point. I wasn't exactly sure what I was listening to then, but again, we were chatting, and it was one of those things that kept distracting me and pulling my attention away from the conversation. Then at that area, it's about 100 yards from where we were. And so I started to purposely listen. I asked her, I said, do you hear that? And she said, yeah, and but wasn't much interested at the time. Then what I heard coming down through, there's a set of trees. So there's the house, and then to the left, if you're facing away from the house, is a large grassy area, and it's about 100 yards to the tree line, and it's a fairly thick tree line. Um, if you're familiar with typical Pennsylvania old growth, that's the kind of trees that, that we're talking about. But that's when I heard, I mean, obvious, well-defined bipedal footsteps. And, you know, you listen to enough animals going through the woods. Now, hunting in South Central Pennsylvania, you'll hear fox now and then. The rare, at that point in time, rare occasional coyote. 
deer were the big thing you would be hearing coming through the trees. Mm -hmm. So you know what a quadruped sounds like. And this was definitely bipedal footsteps. And the thing that really struck me at first was the gate. It seemed abnormally long between steps. And coming downhill, if you ever sort of walked fast down a hill, you know your your gate sort of has a, a heavier uh, sound when your downhill foot plants. Mm -hmm. And that was really obvious as well. So at the bottom of the tree line, it's just a little bit of a space. And then straight across from that is a rail bed, but it's it's an elevated rail bed. So there's a, a huge gravel berm that leads up that embankment. And again, bipedal footsteps, crunching and heavy rail bed gravel. If you're familiar with the size of that rock, you can tell there was something definitely heavy walking on it. And again, the stride was not as much as it was going down the hill, but it was still pronounceably different going up the gravel bed. And then, then it just sort of stopped and sort of thought, well, okay, maybe I'm just scaring myself or something. And we went back to just chatting. And then just moments later, you could hear this thing walking from left to right in front of us going down the rail bed. And again, you could tell it was long gate footsteps. Got about directly in front of where we were, and it sounded like a piece of metal clanked, like somebody picked up a can and threw it or tossed it, something metal just sort of rolled down through the stones a bit. Oh, that's, and then, that's very, very interesting, though. You could, go ahead. Oh, no, and that's what really made me think, like, Oh, wow. It's like, because it really, to me, it sounded like somebody picked something, like threw something. It didn't have an immediate sound of something rolling like you kicked it, but it sort of hit and bounced and bounced before it rolled a little bit. Now we're talking, oh gosh, I forget how far away we are. I mean, we're over 100 yards from the rail bed at that particular point. And, you know, the house sits there. We're probably, oh gosh, maybe between 75 and 100 yards, I'm thinking, from that particular location. And it kept going toward the right away from us. Now, that pathway from where the wood line lines up with the rail bed to where it goes down to where the tree line starts again past the bridge where their, their road to their house went under the rail bed is about 225 yards. And we continue to hear that long stride the whole way down there. Then the really cool thing about being outside late at night was just this, even on a, a hot or a humid night, was this cool breeze that came up the creek. So along the rail bed on the opposite side, there's a small stream that runs along there. So where the rail the railroad bridge has an arch for their farm road to go under, the creek also passes under that as well and comes on this side. And there's just this nice breeze that comes up out of the gully there. Well, when it got right about where the over the underpasses on the railroad bridge where the air is, it was like it stopped again. And as the breeze came up through, we're talking maybe 150, 160 yards off to our right at about 2 o'clock position now. We smelled this seriously foul, garbage can, sharp, musty smell. I could only relate it if you went to the York Fair in the 70s. There were these giant metal garbage cans everywhere. And on a hot Friday evening when those things have been full of stuff all day, those garbage cans had a specific odor. Mm -hmm. And this was like that tenfold. I mean, it literally was one of those things that sort of made you swallow, like, oh, my gosh, what is that? You know, I've smelled cows. I've smelled horses. I've smelled deer. Uh, living in the West now, I've smelled bear. I've smelled elk. I've smelled all sorts of animal in the wild. And there's nothing that compared to that. Man, I sat bolt upright because I was getting pretty darn scared at that point. And then it just walked off down um, the rail bed until we couldn't hear it anymore. And that was the first time anything I thought of as possibly being a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch or whatever. Never really paid any attention to it before. 
I can't even really remember seeing anything about it until after that. And then it was like, oh my gosh, is this what it could have been? And, right. you yeah. know, yeah. began my own little look. But, you know, no, she said that was the first she heard anything like that. But she began to say, tell me stuff like, you know, they had apples, lots of apples and other vegetables go missing, et cetera. And the next day I went back out. And believe me, I drove under that railroad bridge at night with windows up, doors locked pretty quick through there and showed me just paths through the wood that are seriously, were seriously more wide than a, a white tail deer path going through the trees. And that's where I thought, wow, that was something I never expected to, uh, to experience. That was the first time anything in that area that yeah. I came to understand was something going on. Now, there's a real trail along those tracks now. Was there at the time? No, just the, just the standard rail bed. Actually, okay. when I was in Boy Scouts, we used to hike from Glen Rock to New Freedom on the rail beds. I'm very familiar with all lengths of the rail bed. And it was wide enough, and it was fairly smooth on the one side of it because a lot of people actually walked that. You know, scouts did a lot of people that were hunting. We used to hike out that road or the rail bed to go fishing in some of those streams mm -hmm. um, when we would hike outside of Glen Rock. So it was not a rail trail, but it was fair. Not, and it wasn't groomed gravel, but it was pretty flat from regular travel on their footpath. Sure. Yeah. So that was the first of more yeah. than one incident. Well, I, I guess. Yeah. It's, and you know, I, I tried to find it. Well, I, there was no internet then. It wasn't much you could find at the library in uh, Glen Rock either. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Anything of that such. So that was pretty much the end of my investigation and told a couple of people about it. They were like, I mean, nobody really thought about Bigfoot or Sasquatch or anything. So it was just like, it wasn't even met with ridicule, just sort of met with like, yeah, okay. Is that like snipe hunting at, at scout camp or something? Sure, right. yeah. It just really wasn't met with much of anything. So I put it off to pass. Well, interestingly enough, every fall, her mom cooks apple butter from the grabs the apples from the trees. They would have a fire outside in this big, like, metal cauldron kettle on the fire, and they would cut the apples, and they would cook them down right there outside. Oh, it was awesome apple butter. So when I was there, my job would be to haul some apples from the, the barn or every now and then to go up there and get a pitcher of hard cider out of a barrel that was in the barn because instead of just using water to keep it cooking well, they used cider to maintain a better flavor in the apple cider or the apple butter when it was done. So going load after load of apples, and I headed this one time to the barn, and there was horse stalls underneath. And I thought, well, I'll just take a different route around, you know, uh, just walking and carrying apples. And when I got to the base of the barn, I heard this noise that just drew my attention down the one trail. There was a wide trail off to the left side of the property if you're facing the house. And there was just this tall, huge silhouette like this anthropomorphic mass um, standing next to a tree. And when I looked and stopped, it sort of ducked back behind the tree. And I'm like, okay, maybe I didn't see anything. And I just slowed my pace down. And I wasn't sure if it was just me or what. But by then, now I've got this, you know, memory of earlier in the summer and my gut sort of going like, oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it leaned out again and, you know, peered in my direction. I could tell because when it came out along the tree, you could tell the shadow sort of leaned forward around, so you could tell it was facing in my direction. I did not see any facial features. It was under enough shade cover, and it was dark enough in the trees. I, I didn't actually see anything, but it was reminiscent of a head where a face would be pointed in your direction, basically. And it did this twice more as I walked toward the barns, and then I just gave it a hurry up and took off and ran to the barn on the double time. It was either gone when I came back out or just remained hidden. Didn't hear it walk away, but, you know, like three different times, this rather large and meaty looking silhouette just popped out from behind a, a big tree that was down there. I did not say anything to her mom or dad or anything, but she sort of looked at me like with that, Oh my gosh, what did you see, Faze? And I told her later what, what, what I saw, and she's just like, yeah, I don't say anything to anybody. It's like I hear things from now, now and again, and 
and pretty much left it at that from there on out. And, you know, everybody who graduates high school later, you know, thing has never really ended up going back out there again, except extremely periodically on a rare occasion. And so I had no more experiences out there. But I happened to be talking to her sister the other month just about this, like if she had heard anything down there. And, you know, it was interesting. She's like, well, you know, I used to, because there was an older farmhouse, so there was no um, air conditioning inside or anything. So you sleep with your windows open, which is the case in those houses, you know, mm-hmm. in the 70s in that oh, part yeah. of the, the county. And um, she had said that, you know, she'd be in bed in the middle of the night and just hear something like start screaming down in the hollow, which would have been where the creek went past the the rail bridge down further into that tree line. Mm-hmm. And she said that used to scare the bejeevers out of her. And she heard it uh, several different times when she was younger as well. Also, she said that at one point, and I don't remember the year she told me offhand now, but it was before 78, and um, I have our our chat on Facebook somewhere. I'll have to look it up. But Penn State actually had asked to come there and look around the entire property for any kind of signs of something that shouldn't be there because there was apparently some scat evidence according to her that was found by another group who had gone through the area looking for stuff and her father gave them permission to travel all over his property to look for anything they could possibly find which i thought was quite interesting that that really struck me and it made me like when she told me this like last month i'm thinking oh my gosh here i thought well maybe i was imagining stuff yeah my whole life and It's like, wow, she actually sort of corroborated some of my uncertainty. So that was an interesting closure. Yeah, that's um, super interesting. I'm I'm wondering what group from Penn State that would have been. I mean, it's it's a long time back. Yeah, yeah, she just said, yeah, people from Penn State came, and they looked all over the place. They spent a day or two there because someone else who had come through had found, and she specifically said, scat. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, 1978 was a big year for Bigfoot in Pennsylvania. I don't know if you you know that, but in Delta, which isn't, you know, as the crow fl- yep. flies, it's not su- yeah. super far mm-hmm. away. That's when they were finding, you know, two miles of footprints and the, they were seeing it around uh, the Peach Bottom Atomic Power Plant. Tons of encounters down around there and, and uh, northern Maryland at that time. So when you said 1978, like a little bell went off. I was like, ding, that's very interesting that it was around that time. I don't know what it was about that year. 74 was another big year, but not as big as 78. 78 was, I don't know, something was going on in York County with Bigfoot in 1978. Yeah, actually I found it. She said it was the early 70s Penn State came down. So if you're, if you're talking 74, I mean, it could align with that actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they said they were there specifically because someone said there were droppings. And this is her quote, what they told her dad, that had been verified. And they wanted to see if there was other evidence. Wow. wow and they were the second group to come down. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm going to have to dig around a little bit and see if I could figure out who that what that group could have been, because that's, that's really interesting. It, well, it is. And, you know, it's like I... I hear people on your show talk about many things that are different experiences in life and, you know, who's going to believe you and everything or where, where is that slight measure of validation? And when I talked to her and she told me this, I'm like, why didn't you ever tell me this before? She's like, why would I tell you this before? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. yeah. It's like, so we had a common, a common cause uh, at this point in time. And that, that was quite interesting. And, you know, hearing the Faust distillery podcast, which when I was a kid, we used to, go all through there looking for bottles and labels oh, did and everything you? else we could find. Oh, cool. yeah. That's awesome. So I was really interested in listening to that. That was a good history lesson for me, even though I grew up there. But when you closed out with some discussions about Southern York County Sasquatch stuff, I'm like, wow, maybe I'll tell somebody about oh, this. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, it's my goal to, I really want to document every Bigfoot sighting in New York County. It's sort of a pet project of mine. So whenever I get something, I'm like, ooh, 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 I get very excited about it. But this is 
especially interesting because I used to live in Glen Rock. So, you know, well, you know, and down there just a little bit, maybe half a mile at the most, there's a cave on the opposite side of the road on the hillside. Mm -hmm. And my dad told me when he was a kid, you could go way back in there. Okay. See, I heard that. I heard that. Yeah. It used to be a lot deeper. Yeah. Yeah. And that at one point, um, they blasted it closed to keep what they they called it a hobo cave or something that there was something or there was somebody living in there and they blasted it closed so nobody would live in there anymore so you know that's the local story that it was purposely closed to keep people out but it, it seems to me like it would be a strange place for someone to camp out and live off the grid so i often wondered after this stuff happened is like or well, was there something else going on that was different then and they closed that off because uh, you get an underground cave system well gee that i mean it'd be a long stretch of the imagination but it could wind its way to other towns in southern york county or delta etc yeah so i began talking to him about it he remembered and up at the beyond the lutheran cemetery in glen rock they used to camp there for scouts and then the, the scout area was up there when i was a kid also and there were a bunch of them out there camping one night and they just heard this crazy crazy howling sound up there and they didn't know what it was they assumed it and it could have been a pack of dogs they had no clue what it was it was like something they had not heard before because i remember hearing other older folks in town was when i was a kid talking about they got all the men together in town with their shotguns on looking for a giant pack of wild dogs so huh. it's just there's some interesting things around there and since i've been sort of poking around here of late asking about weird stuff that happened before my time as well so it could be on to something it would be really great to see those years all fleshed out since uh now you know thank goodness i listened to that particular show and realized there were other things going on other than just this experience i had there's a uh older Bigfoot researcher from Maryland. His name is Bob Chance. And I was at his, oh, I I mean, it might've been his like 75th birthday party or something. And he plopped in front of me all of his records. And he had, you know, he'd been investigating for years and he just let me go through them. He's because I said, Hey, do you have anything from York County? And he said, he just, he's put his records in front of me. He said, have at it. (laughs) One of the reports. Yeah. Yeah. One of the reports he gathered so he would you used to have these meetings at like fire halls and stuff and advertising the paper and people would come and, and you know tell them these stories and stuff kind of like the town halls they have on uh, that yeah. that bigfoot show uh mm-hmm. finding bigfoot but one of the stories he had collected was a woman who said that she's there was a creature in a cave and she said it was somewhere near shrewsbury i believe was the report and i can't think of any other cave but that one like that's uh, the only one I know. Of. Yeah, that's the 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 only place. Now there's a couple like root cellar kind of things, like or yeah, you know, mm-hmm. spring spring house kind of things on the side of hills and stuff. But as far as like a cave cave, that's the only one I could think of. Yeah, my uncle, my dad's. Well, he'd be my great uncle. Um, when I was a kid, I remember them talking that you know it. It apparently went so far back in that somebody even said it came out near Shrews or Stewartstown somewhere. See, yeah, was part I, of the was part of the Underground Railroad. Interesting. See, yeah, that, I believe that was uh, somewhere in that report too. Said that this cave went either all the way to it was all the way to Shrewsbury or it might have been Stewartstown. Yeah. yeah, fascinating, yeah. fascinating. Well, there's so yeah, so I've heard that from people that would have been, you know, alive, well and strong in those years. So that would have been, you know late 60s, early 70s, when people who were 60-some years old were telling these stories, mm-hmm. you know, about that cave. And it interested me because it was a cave. I had no other connection to it with anything like we're discussing today at all. But I remember them saying, yeah, they used to go way back in there wow. um, with little uh, gas lanterns and look around and and all kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's an interesting area. Yeah, I've been in it, but it only it's like what only goes back you know, 30 feet or something now. I forget how yeah. how deep it is. It's been yeah. a while since I've been in. So when you saw this upright thing, you know, leaning from behind the tree, could you get any idea of the size of it? Well, so I'm um, a little shorter now that I'm older, but I was six, three and a half then. And was from where it was, the, the pitch was just a couple degrees lower than me. 
And so where the trail was, I don't know elevation wise, I can't really make up a number on that, but I would have walked downhill probably 60 yards, uh, a slight maybe, I don't know, 10, 15% grade till I would get to the trail. So 60 yards away on about a 10, 15 degree slope, me looking straight out, I was looking like straight at the bottom of the river, the head would meet the neck. So I'm thinking it was definitely taller than me, just mm. using some rudimentary yeah, old yeah. scout thoughts on how you figure out the height of a tree before you cut it down. Right, yeah, yeah. And about how far away was it from you? About 65 yards from mm. that edge of the barn to where the actual trail met the the, um, the grassy part of the field. Mm-hmm. That's close enough to, to get an idea that, uh, you know, the yeah. shape and, and size of something. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was a broad, rounded shoulder. That, I mean, you could just, like, you know, I couldn't see, like, a hand off the tree, but, you know, the typical leaned out from behind a tree, you could see that was a, not a square linebacker shoulder, but it was broad, but rounded down toward the, the shoulder part to the arm. And then, you know, I couldn't really see a differentiation of a, a neck, you know, the what I've heard recently, like, looking like uh, somebody wearing a hoodie kind of thing. It was... Basically, if somebody drew an, a rudimentary outline and colored it black. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, was there any thought in your head of, of Bigfoot at the time? Or, did it, you know, was it just something well, weird? No, after what I heard coming out of the trees. Now, the interesting thing, way up in the corner where I first said I heard, like, what sounded like a really big deer pawing, that was, they didn't use it then, but back in the 1800s when that, farmhouse was built that was where the dump for the house was ah. so there were old bottles and metal things up there and you know i don't know that they dumped anything recent up there at all but that was one one thing she told me later that's the old the, the old dump for the house when it was built here so that whole experience the bipedal exceptionally long stride heavy footsteps you know easily climbing up a steep rail bed with you know three or four long steps and then the odor i i smelled elk in the mountains on a rainy day and i uh, that's bad enough let alone this i've not smelled anything like this in my entire life mm-hmm. and that's where i sort of thought like okay this is different what is this and that's where i started just trying to find anything else out about it and she's the one that sort of quipped at the term Bigfoot. Like, I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, like I saw a TV commercial, I think. What are you talking about? Right, right. And uh, yeah. that's where I started, like, really thinking, okay, well, maybe there is something to this, but why in South Central Pennsylvania of all places? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, when I was young, I mean, I, I loved Bigfoot stories and stuff, and I was completely fearless about just roaming the woods night and day, literally night and day on, on uh, my parents' farm yeah. in northern Maryland. Uh, not terribly far from Glen Rock, but, but not in Glen Rock. We're in northern Maryland there. But yeah. uh, I, was, I would read about Bigfoot constantly, but I just had this impression that Bigfoot was on the uh, West Coast. So so I was fearless. I, like I said, night and day I was out in those woods. Never had anything strange when I was young, so you know, may, maybe I'm thankful for that. It gave me a love of the woods and, and not mm-hmm. a fear for it, but... You know, so the idea of Bigfoot being around, I mean, I had heard a couple stories when I was little about like, you know, supposedly somebody saw Bigfoot, you know, at this place or that place. But I really just thought, well, nah, that couldn't be because Bigfoot's in, you know, California and Oregon and stuff. Well, yeah, and I had no clue where it was at all until right after then. And I started like trying to find more information and never really talked about to anybody in my family. But when I moved out West here, my mom's originally from Idaho. I'm out here, moved out here for a job in Utah, working here, still have uncles that live up in Idaho. And I was up there one day and we hunt together in Idaho. And I, I, I just decided to tell him about this. And he didn't even take it with a grain of salt. He's well, let me tell you something. He, and, uh, friend of his were hunting in the sawtooth hunting elk and they had split up his friend came back like in a panic and said follow me and he, he, what he did was he found his you know trail that he figured was a decent sized elk trail and walked back and it just dead ended at this rock face where there was a, a cave opening and 
when he initially walked inside, he smelled a little weird. He used his flashlight and looked around. And when he turned around to walk out, above the opening of the, the cave was like a wooden, I hate to use the word lair, um, platform, like a wooden platform made of trees and covered in pine boughs. And he just got the creeps and went out and got him. And when they went back there, the thing was totally destroyed. Huh. We were talking like 20, 30 minute time span, walk in the cave. And he walked in, saw the stuff laying on the ground, looked up at the flashlight. The entire thing was ripped apart and destroyed. And they, they beat it out of there. Wow. I mean, yeah. so there's weird stuff everywhere. And it's just like, you know, every time I hear something like that, it's like, okay, I wasn't crazy. I wasn't imagining it. <laughs> right, I yeah. did hear, see, and smell what I thought I did. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I have a fun question I ask people that, that has not to do with Bigfoot, but it's just a fun question I've been asking guests. On the morning of April 18th, 1961, Joe Simonton saw a silver disc on his farm. He went out, he investigated it, he actually boarded the craft where he encountered three dark-skinned humanoids who handed him an empty jug. He filled it with water and brought it back to them, and in return they gave him some pancakes. This is a you know, for a, a well-known UFO history story. The question is, would you eat those pancakes? I don't know. I might save some for posterity or proof that it happened, but I'd probably do everything short of eating it, and then, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like I, they wanted water, I got pancakes. Either it was a ploy to... I don't know. Maybe I ate the pancakes and was abducted never knew it. I don't know. Interesting quandary to be in. I yeah. think the average person, if nobody ever knew they tried it, would try them. I think the Simonton guy, I think he saved one and tried one because uh, he did taste one because he said okay. that they tasted like they didn't use sugar. They tasted very bland. But uh, but yeah, he, I, and I think it, it might still exist somewhere. I think the actual pancake. Interesting. Might, yeah. So yeah, my answer is no. I just, like, nah, I'm not going to do that. But I've had people say, no, would, you better eat it because you don't want to offend them. And, you know, whatever is going to happen is going to happen with them. But I, was, I don't know. It's just a fun question. Yeah, Kevin, it is. It's one of those things, what would you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, it, you know, in the situation, my answer might change. But just thinking like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if I, I need that. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, thank you so much for sharing your story. I'm so happy to get this down. And uh, I love Glen Rock and, and I love Bigfoot. So you check two boxes for me. You bet. And thanks for having that little blurb at the end of the Faust um, episode or I wouldn't have reached out to anybody. Well, I'm so happy to have your story. Thanks so much. And uh, if you get any more information from anybody, if you know your girlfriend's sister reaches out and tells oh. you any, any more, please share. Well, oh, for sure. I, I definitely will. All right. Have a great night. Hey, thank you. We decided to go down there. At this point, we didn't even really know. I hadn't talked to Kevin yet. I, I knew the story he had emailed me, and I knew about where it was, but I didn't know exactly where. But we decided we just wanted to do a night hike. It was a warm night. It wasn't too hot. I think we'd gotten a little break in the weather. Yeah, yeah. it was so hot, and it was cooler. Yeah. We were like, yeah, let, let's do a night hike because it won't be as hot. Yeah. And we didn't really know where we were going. Yeah, I'm, as usual, we were just freestyling. <laughs> yes. Well, let's go down to, to Glen Rock because I know we can walk on this rail trail and we'll try to figure out where this was and we'll just see what happens. Well, neither one of us, I think I can speak for you, and neither one of us expected much of anything to happen. No. Much less what did happen, which was kind of... Woo! If I do say so. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. Ric Flair would have been proud. <laughs> So we're going to play these sections, and then we'll just talk a little bit about each one afterwards. Just a note, as with all on-site stuff, audio's up and down. I always like to mention it. Sometimes one of us is closer to the mic. One of us walks away 20 feet or 20 yards even, and we're talking. So Or we run away in fear. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually mentioned that at some point in this. I was like, yeah. boy, I, I really want to run right now. I'm suppressing the urge to do that. <laughs> That's how creepy it got. Yeah. But yeah, so audio's up and down, but I do my best to even it out. I think I think everything's pretty pretty good. I did my yeah. best on this. So 
Okay, let's go ahead and hear part one here. Remember I told you about my cousin? Mm -hmm. Like they were, it was my father and her dad, they were talking about seeing, uh, people were seeing footprints down in Seven Valleys. Yep. Yeah. Which wasn't, which isn't far from here. No. And they were talking about like actually going to look for it. Her family lived in Seven Valleys at the time. Outside Seven Valleys. That would have been, you know what, that would have been the same time period. Because if you told me it's 78. Yeah. She would have been like five. Which is a year older than me. Today is uh, September 2nd. So it's many, many years later, obviously. But. Always worth taking a poke at these things. Seeing what happens when we go out there, I think. And while there is development around that wasn't here at the time, most of the stuff by the railroad tracks has been here for a hundred years or more. And all these old houses have been here. Well, this isn't the first time we went to a place that had sightings in the 70s and had weird stuff happen. Yeah. Look at Muddy Creek. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any recent ones from down there? 2014, I believe. Okay. And then, uh, as the latest 2018, like screams and stuff, but a sighting in 2014. Is this railroad here? Yep. Oh, is the town a railroad? No, no. Yeah, that's what I meant. No, no, not yet. It's still corn rock. I'm not sure what this is. <laughs> this station might have a name on it. They're, they're rehabbing the station. This might have a... Jeez. Hold up there. I'll have to look at that the end of the day. Because there was a... On the hill there was a light up there. Huh. Like a big light. Could have been a car. Yeah. Huh. That was weird. When I worked on the steam train, I probably would have known all this. But I forgot it. Okay. I'm guessing that's going to be the Clearview Station. Oh, yeah. It's neat, though. It was... That's the name of the road, anyway. It's West oh, Clearview oh, Drive. Okay. Okay. But, yeah, that's definitely a train, an old train station from back yeah. in the day. They're, uh, they're fixing it up. They've done a lot of work on it. It's great. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I never walked this section. I'm always like north of here on the real trail. Mm -hmm. I've gone from New Freedom all the way down to Gazoo's Woods on the rail trail. During the day? Yeah, during the day. That, that might have to be one of our like nightly night wonders. Yeah, we could do that. That we're talking about doing? Yeah, and kind of end up at Gazoo's. Yeah, we totally could do that. I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's going to be a series. What do you think? Yeah, I know. I think that's a great idea. Night meanders or yeah. night rambles or whatever. Just yeah. You pick a spot, you pick a direction, just go and we end up somewhere. Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. Because we can park and do freedom and just... I mean, it's probably seven, eight miles, but it's not. Yeah. That's nothing. Yeah, that's not the worst. So. Huh? Uh, this is the trailer park. That's one of the the landmarks. So the farmhouse, I believe, where they were having the activity, is right over the hill from this. Okay. This trail park. So we're close. Yeah. There's a field to the left. It might be here. It might be the next clearing. Yeah. 
which was known as a, uh, a hobo encampment. The hobos that ride the trains and stuff? Yeah, I know who the they, hobo is. Yeah. So they, they had a, like a hobo encampment off to the side. Center of either, da- either down in this field or maybe the next one up. A little bit further south, there was a tannery that they were bringing the horses back from, from uh, Gettysburg, uh, from processing from the battle. You know, I mean, they were doing that lots of places. But here, it's, it's crazy how the battlefield changed stuff around here. Yeah, like I said, my company would not exist if it weren't for that. Which is crazy. Yeah. I don't think that was the farmhouse there that the guy was talking about. I don't think. I think it's the next one over where he was having these encounters. It wasn't his house. It was or his girlfriend. He hung out there a bunch. And maybe it was that farmhouse. I think that's the farmhouse. Yeah. So here's the interesting thing, and I was telling you this before we recorded. Years ago, someone contacted me about interference on in our recordings. And I said, eh, it's just cell phone interference. Sometimes, you know, they, for whatever reason, the cell phone and the recorder. Usually when they get close to one another. Yeah, yeah. And you'll get this digital interference. And I kind of wrote it off, but the person wrote me back then. You know, this is either an email or maybe a Facebook message. And they said, well, Every time it happens, it's right before you guys say, oh, I saw a light or something weird happened. I didn't think much of it at that point. I was like, nah, I think it's just a coincidence. I think this is just cell phone interference. But on these recordings down here in in Glen Rock, this interference is happening again and again right when weird stuff happens, like at that moment. So we can't, when we're running the recorders, we, we don't know when the interference is happening. We don't hear it until we listen back. Yeah. It's not like we have headphones on and we can hear what we're recording. So right at the end there, Chad sees the first light of the night. Now, I think you weren't entirely – at this point, we still weren't convinced anything super weird was happening. Yeah, we were like, I, I was pretty think, unsure. I yeah, was you were like, unsure. I, I, I saw a light there, but you know, it was kind of like, I think that was weird. But then this interference happens, and I thought, well, that's weird, right? That's a little strange that the interference happens right there, but probably just a coincidence. We'll keep track of this as we go through here, because it's pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and play the second part. It was in the tree right there. Mm -hmm. That big. Let's just keep going at this point. Could have been something in the sky that was coming through the tree. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just getting by. So far. Yeah, that's why I turned around. Look back there right before you saw that light, and this like I kind of turned around. So I was like, hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I started feeling like... I like my, my hair standing on my arms already. I started feeling hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. You said there's a cave out here? Yeah, it's going up a little bit. We, if we get to a, a parking area, like a little parking area by the railroad tracks, we'll be close to it. It's over to the left. We might be close to it now. With the cave? It's yeah, it's over. It's on the other side of the road, over there. It's been so long since I've been there. If you drive slowly along there, you can see it from the road. 
I've been in it before, but it's been a number of years. All right, well, stop. That was a bright light right there. Like a boom. Oh, I saw it. Yeah. Now, is that man me? I don't know. Did somebody count? That looks like a piece of garden work there. Yeah. It's got a little bridge. It looks purposeful. But there's a sign there. Yeah, I know. It's a rest spot. But where the hell did the light come from? Yeah, that I don't know. It was bright. Yeah, stand over here one. In that, in those weeds. I thought it was a little closer. I thought it was like kind of there. I mean, it could have been. It was bright as an LED. That I mean, I thought it was, had to be something made, yeah. right? Yeah, it wasn't a freaking. Um, it wasn't a firefly. No, yeah. hell no. It was bright. Way brighter. Yeah. I'm glad you saw it. Yeah, that's weird. Okay. Yeah. Where'd it go? I flashed the light so I wanted to see if it was re that reflector, but that was a different spot. So this sounds weird. But as I, when you, you went over up here and I stood back there, I, I almost thought I was seeing it like go back in. That way. Into the weeds. When yeah. I walked over to this side? When I walked over there and you came over here. Yeah, well, when I walked back over here, I thought I saw something move like that. Too. I thought I saw it go back in the light. You know what I mean? Like, and kind of get covered up by, by leaves and stuff as it went. I saw something. Did you just see it? I did. There it goes. See it? Is it something reflecting from the car lights? It seems way brighter than, than a reflection. But it's not. Look at no, it just went. I just saw it, yeah. It just went again. It's not. What is that? No car that time. Did it move or was it just just the flash? I think it was just the flash. There it is. There. One again. Yeah, no, it was a bright white. No, I swear, I saw it like move back without blinking. Like the light was on. Oh, it's not and, going and went off. That's what I saw. Yeah, no, but I mean, when I saw it move back, I swear it like wasn't blinking on and off like a lightning bug. It was like withdrawing. But I, I just know. saw it like come on and go off. It's like somebody flashed, flashed a flashlight on. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I I saw that too. I don't know. That's an odd one. Yeah. It was close too. Yeah. That, it was really. I think that was one of the brightest lights I've ever seen out here. It was super bright. Yeah. I it looked like a bright white LED flashlight or something. It looked, it looked yellow to me. Somebody had left a... There's no way. I think the car lights aren't even hitting that direction. Yeah, no. 
there's no reflector there. I, fla I flashed my flashlight down in there and everything. Was, at first, what I thought was like, remember, speaking of that place down in Maryland, all those like lights in that graveyard? I thought somebody had left some well, That's what there. I thought too. Yeah. So it was like a. I mean, it's white. Sweet smell. I don't know if it's that jasmine. I smelled it back there earlier. No. It's jasmine. Not right now. I don't think it's honeysuckle. It might be Probably honeysuckle. honeysuckle. There's plants that... See? None of this looks like what we saw. Oh, with the car's lights Yeah, in. yeah. Car. See, I thought maybe there was a reflector there. There was no way that was a, a freaking lightning bar. It was too big and too bright. Oh, yeah, yeah. This little rest area with a picnic table right along the rail trail. I don't know why that place got so weird or why it was so weird. We saw a light when we walked by, and I want to make it clear. This was not a firefly. It was a bright white light. It looked like the brightest LED you could imagine. I don't know what it was. And, and you went right up to it and tried to figure out what well, it was. Well, even a couple times we both went up yeah, to it. Yeah, I don't know. When you hear me talk about it, it, it looked like... It drew back into the brush at some point. And you could, if you imagine somebody was holding a little light and they walked backwards, mm -hmm. holding it. That's what it looked like at one point. Then it would come on again. It was odd. It was a very odd thing. But right there, it's the interference again, right when that happened. Yeah, So which was, which was weird. I mean, you didn't, I didn't even know about the interference until you said something to me this evening. Yeah, yeah. So I had no idea. Yeah, I don't know. What you don't hear me say and this part, because I wrote it off as nothing, but you do hear me mention it later, is got hit by a, a drop of water while we were at that little area. The first time. The first time. Didn't think anything of it, wrote it off, whatever. You know, maybe a bat peed on me, I don't know. <laughs> no, I just thought maybe, maybe a, you know, just a single drop of rain. Or we're going to start bottling bat pee and selling <laughs> it. <laughs> so just keep that in mind, too. Let's go ahead. Not the bat pee, the drop of, wa drop of whatever it was. Go ahead and play this. So we're, we're, basically what we're doing here is we're walking south on the rail trail from Glen Rock. We knew that this farm that Kevin talked about was somewhere between Glen Rock and Railroad. We didn't know exactly where it was, but we figured we can do that walk. Let's just do the walk and, yeah. and see. What Relatively happens. easy. I mean, it's a it's a flat trip. It's pretty flat. Yeah. 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 Compared to our normal hikes. With, yeah. Yeah. Cake. So here's part three. And we kind of walk beyond this this little area with the light. And then uh, we walk up to this bridge. Let's go ahead and, and play that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that cave is it's across that road over there. Well, probably right on it right here. Stop. I'm not entirely sure, but I swear I just saw a black shadow walk up, didn't make a sound, move up onto that, that hillside there. It was the kind of thing where I, like, it was right as I looked back, so it could have been my eyes playing tricks on me or something, but... I don't doubt you. I mean, dude, God only knows what happened on this railroad track that nobody ever reported. Well, that's what I'm saying with the hobo can. If you can or anywhere they're bringing the dead horses all the way back to the battlefield. What roads this were coming up on? Uh, 
tax in my brain. I don't remember. Uh, probably not good to do it during the night because there's people driving along that road, there's nowhere to walk. But if you were to walk down to that road, make a left and go back a half mile or so, that cave's down there. We can only park here if we want to next time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think anybody bothers us. I don't think any park rangers come. We're in the middle of nowhere here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'll put us in the middle of the action as far as the sighting for and stuff. So if we see that light in the same place again when we go back. That will be interesting. So t okay, this is screwed. Like to me, like right now when I'm looking at the woods, like the trees, mm -hmm. they look like they're lit up by like a like a sunset mm -hmm. light. Like I'm not seeing black and gray. I'm seeing like amber, like really sun sunset light going through the trees. Like if the, if the sun was setting, right. And the light was coming through the trees. Huh. That is bizarre. Like, it's not... You, you understand what I mean? It's that not normal... And the color involved. I don't know. Maybe it's me. I, what's it look like to you? I'm so, my night vision is so bad, it's, it's all gray to me. It's dark gray. Because I'm seeing literally like, I'm seeing the road, mm -hmm. the trail, whatever you want to call it, the railroad tracks, and I'm seeing the trunks of the trees, and I'm seeing what looks like, like orangish, reddish light coming through the trees from this direction. Mm -hmm. It's as if the sun was setting, and you, right. know how, you know how the sun looks when it goes yeah. through the trees? That's yeah. what I'm seeing. Huh. And then I keep seeing, I like, twice I saw the little, the little rocking yeah, I, light. I thought I saw way out. I thought I saw some lights and I couldn't tell if it was how far through the leaves or whatever. Well, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's orange, orange and sunset light. Weird, but I, I'm still seeing it. Yeah. So I was back yesterday, I don't see it. It's only in this direction. Interesting. We're out of that smell. That was smell like a wet. Mm -hmm. That's a smell. Oh, okay. You see where the, the trail bends? Yep, I can see that. All right, so when this one tree comes down, I can see that. From there on, I'm seeing that glow. Huh? And as we're traveling, the glow stays ahead of me. That orangey. I can literally see light coming through. I, I can see an orange tint. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. But not, it's not extreme, it doesn't look like a sunset to me. No, I'm seeing an orangey sunset coming through the dam. Well, your eyes are a lot better, so. Coming through the dam. What is up with that? I could never seen that before. Wow, that was weird. I just saw your shadow. Oh, the moving mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Which way did it go? It was actually at the tree line going that way. Now you mean like towards us or up in? Up in, up that okay. way. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I saw. Yeah, I saw it like up here. The shadow. Yeah. It went from this tree into there. That's disturbing. Now, I saw it like there, but I think that's either a car or yeah, that's a car. I think this might be the bridge. Yeah, so. yeah I know. I saw it. I was just made our goal. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I just want to say, this is weird. I'm thinking like... What's that? Is that garbage? Or a dead animal? One or the other. I mean, let's hope it's one of those two. Smell. 
talk about the, the light in the skies that you saw. And I, I didn't see it. And I don't know if it's because, you know, my night, we've established my night vision is not as good as yours. Right. You were almost disturbed by it. You kept bringing it up. Yeah, it You're was like, I'm really telling you, Tim, the skies are bothering little... me. Yeah. It was really bothering me. It was kind of like, and I even described it then, it was like looking at a sunset yes. through yellow fall leaves because mm-hmm. the sky was like a golden glow color. Mm-hmm. Most, you know, not up high, but through the trees mm-hmm. it was looking like that like if you looked up at the sky you didn't see it but it was just through that certain section it was almost like the whole woods were glowing with this kind of golden light is best way to describe it. it was golden it was like when you look through a hickory forest which has a very bright yellow leaves mm-hmm. and it, the sun's really low and you have that golden glow going you're looking through the leaf and you see that golden glow. That was the best way for me to describe it. I even wow. said it then. Yeah, yeah. And it was just disturbing because the whole woods like was lit yeah. up like and that. It just, and this was dark. This was pretty late yeah. at this point. Yeah, I don't think we got started till nine or later. Yeah, it was pretty late. Yeah. I don't know if this was the kind of thing where we were seeing different things or if I couldn't see it because of my night vision, right? But it certainly wasn't. I thought I would see it. You know, I was trying to see what you were seeing in a way. And I was just like, no, I don't think I'm, I'm really not seeing it. I, I don't want to say this sounds weird, but I don't want to say it was like an aurora. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen the aurora when, when it's here in PA and when yeah. it, every once in a while it does come down. Yeah. It was kind of like that. You could see it, but it was almost like like an afterglow. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. There was yeah. no cars or anything like that. It wasn't like the sky glowing up from looking at a city from a long distance. Right. Like, yeah. you, you understand what I'm saying when you're on a hill and you see yeah, like... You, yeah, you cannot see the glow of Baltimore from, from here. No, so, yeah. but it, it was just like this weird glow in the, in the in the woods. I could see the trunks of the trees. I could see the mm-hmm. the individual limbs. I could see the leaves. It was like, it was like, like I said, the best way to describe it was a low sunset coming through the woods. Maybe the weirdest thing was you see, it was only in that one area of the trail. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. once we got beyond that, you're like, yeah. no, I don't see it anymore. Until we walk back through that area, yeah, again, it was only see. in that that one spot, and yeah. that whole place, that whole area was just unsettling me. Like it really, it was weird. Like it was, I wasn't scared or anything, but it was like unsettled, unnerving mm-hmm. was the best way to describe it. Like I saw like we weren't supposed to be there. I saw <laughs> a big something. shadow, and I did like it's the kind of thing where I was like. I think I just saw a big shot. And it's the kind of thing where you like you start questioning yourself immediately, right? I yeah, I and, I, and that's what I was doing with the golden glow. I was questioning myself. I'm like, am I really seeing this or, or is it just me? Or? And then you saw the shadow. The, mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, so, so there's something to that. We make it to this bridge. And at this point, we're both like, this is a creepy area. Like, this is creepy here. The bridge we get to. Kevin described in his interview when he talks about the bridge with the stream that runs underneath it and the road. That's it. That's the bridge. Yeah. That's the one. And is that's which creek is that? I think it's a branch of the Cadoras. I'm not sure which. Okay. Which because there's a lot of different branches yeah. down there in that yeah. area. You know, he named that as a creepy area. With then he said there was a bad smell. We got a bad smell there too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. And then of course that clip also ended with interference. When we were in yeah. that area. More interference. So, All right, the next section. Yeah, I don't like this section. Yeah, yeah. it's real weird. Just... There's that wet smell in the end. Yeah. Was it here? I thought it was further up. It was further up. Really on edge right yep. now. Like yep. skitzy. Yep. What'd you hear? Like a ah. Kind of at the place where the two intersect here, aren't we? I heard it. You heard it that time. I heard it.
What are you doing? Are you turning your clothes inside out? Yes. All right. When we were on the bridge, I was feeling lightheaded. Yeah, that place was really weird. But no, I just saw what you're talking about. Finally, I saw it. Which one? The orange light. Yeah. Finally, I saw it. Did you still see it? Is it all lit up? Like, I, like it's a constant glow. I saw it just sort of pass by kind of thing. No, to me, it's like the woods is like lit up with that whole amber. I can see the trees. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm... You know what I think? This one I think is happening. Okay? I'm, I'm going to think I'm inside the box. I think something's trying to lead us. But we're on a trail that they can't. Mm. Plus, you got steel iron tracks here. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm getting. Oh, interesting. Did you hear that? What'd you pick up? Like a, like a real sharp. No, I didn't hear like that. A, but real sharp. Like we're literally walking in the lights. That's what I keep seeing. Yeah. We can't, I, I don't have a choice. Did you say it's, it's the same place it was before? What? The lights. What the? Which ones? The, the amber, amber lights. lights. Oh, yeah, the yeah they were all on the stretch. Yeah. And once in a while I see that big swirl. Like it's a big... Like somebody goes like this, like oh, a huge light. I swear to God, it'd be this big. Like it's just okay. So that's kind of what I saw, but like, uh, like kind of across the trail, like that. Yeah, but it was right. Okay. But what I saw, it was like right in dead center, like way out. You okay. saw it way out down the trail. It was, I mean, fifty yards, I guess. From okay, so I, I saw, saw it. it further down. Yeah, but it'd be huge. It'd be like right above, like yeah. This was like a big, like. Big swirl, like so a whirlpool, yeah. a whirlpool of light. This is weird. This is this is a different thing. I am physically suppressing the urge to run right now. <laughs> you smell that smell? Yeah, I smell it. The wet. We're no closer to the trees here than we've we been. Yeah. You want to explain why I turned my shirt inside out so people who don't know know? Well, if your folklore says if you're feeling you know, sort of dazed, confused, or pixie-led, or otherwise kind of off your game, that turning your clothes inside out can confound whatever uh, spirits are trying to lead you that way, or make you that way. Or... That's the first time I've ever done that, ever. Oh, this is a crawl switch, okay. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Here yeah, we here a, we come. Yeah, after, after, after this, it's going to get bonkers, okay? Thankfully. I don't see the amber anymore. It was only in that section. Yeah. you got to be kidding me. My flashlight's gone. What? You set it down when you changed your shirt? No. I would have put it in my pocket. I'm not walking back for it. We'll never find it. Yeah. For one, if I did sit it down, but I would I wouldn't I don't do that. Knife is accounted for. Everything else is accounted for. I got another one in my pack. Well, I was going to hand you one because um, I got my hands full. Mm -hmm. Hand me yours. Give me a second. All right. I got dizzy. Sorry. No worries. Oh. So we're in a green 
everything happens after that tail is up, right? Oh, hell yes. Yeah. You feel like you're being followed, don't you? A little bit. I get, it's more just like... If I hadn't seen that platform and then you didn't see one, I, th I think it's not. Well, what was concerning me more is that it was the lights more than anything. Yeah. And it really stirred up after we saw that little light. Right before you turned your shirt inside out, there's more static, more interference. That's weird. <laughs> I, I want to say it's completely random. And I think most of the time when we get it, it is completely random. But it doesn't feel so random in this particular recording. I'll say that. No. No. I mean, I turned my shirt inside out because I felt like we were trying to be pulled yeah, off I've, that area. I, and again, this is like a, a wide, straight trail. Neither one of us expected much of anything. We wanted to take a walk. That's there's, basically... there, there's railroad tracks along there. Yeah, we weren't yeah. trying to. Yeah. We had no idea what was going to go down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had more bad smells in there. And then I did want to ask you about this. Your flashlight disappeared. Did you ever find your flashlight? No. So it's just gone. So it's gone. Yeah, yeah so I don't know if I sat it down. Yeah, yeah. And, and we didn't know at the time, but you were just like, that's very much unlike me. Yeah. And it is. I, like, you're very... I'm obsessive. Like, ever since, or even before then, when, I, when my knife disappeared, mm -hmm. I was always checking my pockets yeah. constantly making yeah. sure my blades there and everything's there that's unlike me to not i can attest to misplace to that. that yeah because usually i'm like hey chad do you have blank and you just pull it right here whipped you know? it right out <laughs> yeah because yeah. you know you, you know where all your gear is so i don't know if i misplaced it maybe because i was so unsettled because like i said that was the first time i ever pulled my shirt off and turned it inside out yeah and Brother Richard would be proud of me. I think he said he was. Yeah. I think I told him. <laughs> and he said, good man. Or yeah. <laughs> and because it just felt like, and I think he even said on the recording then, it felt like we were trying to be led off yeah. the rail trail. Yeah. So like I said, I don't know if it was, if I misplaced it, if it fell out of my pocket, but I would have found it. Mm-hmm. So this was an out and back hike. So mm -hmm. where all this happens is, you know, again, uh, you know, in this weird area. And th and that was the thing. Like we had to go back through there and I was just like, yeah, neither one of us really wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's play this next section. Mm -hmm. We go back to that little rest area again. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of what kicked it off. Yeah. There it goes. Did you see it? I saw it. I totally saw it again. Like if it was something that was triggered by our movement, like a man-made thing, I would, would not be surprised, but it's not. I mean, we can see what's there. Damn, I smell beer. <laughs> hmm. There's nothing in here. Not a thing. Heavy thud huh? before Chad stepped on the bridge. From this direction back here. Real heavy, like, boom, like that. What the hell are we seeing? I'm telling you, I, when we were here before, I was feeling little tiny raindrops. I'm feeling them again, but only here. I was like, oh, we're getting a little bit of rain. On, only, only here, right in front of where this light was. Real tiny, and then the light went off again. Same spot. Every Same time. spot. So for the listener, this is not even 20 feet away from us in the brush. Well, it's literally 10 feet. 
Yeah. This is an ash. It's right on the side of the trail, and we cannot figure out what it is. It's a light. When we saw it coming in on the way in. Right there. I thought I saw it pull back through the brush. Well, I saw it. There it went again. Same spot? It's like every time you turn, Chad, I swear, you turn to look. And I'm feeling those little drops again. Little drops of it. What is happening? There it is. Cool. You see it? Okay. Did you make that whistle sound? No, that's the whistle I heard earlier. That's the whistle I heard earlier. Ooh, that's freaky. It's it's real high pitch. Yes. Oh, I heard it. Like a. Yep. It's exactly a little bit higher than that, but yep. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah. Why am I feeling? There it went again. Why am I feeling? Drops of water here. I just felt the wind too. You feel it? Yeah. I felt it before, but only when we were standing right here. They're very, very light. It's not like. Yeah, it's just like. They're very, very light. And they're only here. All night. I'm, done. Glad, you, I'm glad you heard that freaking whistle. I did. It was terrifying, actually. <laughs> like it's. it's It sounded like it was right beside us. Oh, that's yeah. what I heard it yeah. earlier, but yeah, that's, back. that's why it freaked me out because I'm thinking, is whatever's in there making the light whistling too? You know, like it sounded that close. It sound, it didn't necessarily sound like it came from that direction, but see, I'm catching something moving, like just like like this. Yeah, like literally right here, right on the other side of the bridge, going up and down like that, like a. Like about that size, and like this. Uh huh. And it's real bright here. I mean, mm -hmm. you can see my hand. I can literally see the the glint of the moon off my watch. Wish that on compass. Did look back, and I did think I saw red back there. Uh, hesitate to say eyes, but I'll say a red light back behind us on the trail I don't even call it rain it's like droplets of water there it is there's the rain yeah just hit my hand yeah but it's not like it's, it's a physical drop oh I see it yeah now is that from the trees I don't know I'm not under the tree here I'm just getting hit in the face with it well I'm kind of like where I'm standing is right here yeah but I mean, I'm, I'm right here, I'm getting hit in the face with it. Let's walk over here and see if we still feel. All right, here, take a stick. I'm cleaning my glasses, because, okay. All right, to be honest with you, right on the other side of the bridge. That, see, now I'm feeling that wetness down, too. Now, it was a physical drop you saw mm -hmm. in my hand, mm -hmm. but I'm not feeling it anymore. Hear that? What'd you hear? A little thunk. Yeah, I didn't hear it, but... But I keep, I, like, on the other side of the bridge, mm -hmm. right through there, I'm, I'm seeing, like, what looks like, I don't know, distortions going back and forth. So, again, for the listener, this is, whoa, I just saw that. Yeah. That was not a car passing. What was no, that? I don't know. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. That was not a car passing. If we feel the rain, oh, the drops over here is raining. If they weren't calling for rain tonight. And you saw water on my on my oh, yeah. hand. I'm not feeling it here. Nope. I don't know, dude. I, this is weird. This is now. See, I'm not feeling any malevolence, though. I'm just feeling like. I see now. I saw a black shadow move up there, mm. up that way. It was right there. Okay. I don't feel so crazy from before then. And there's no lightning bugs yet. 
like I said, I, I literally walked up there, looked in the no, brush. I'm, it doesn't have the same character as a lightning well, bug. It wouldn't have to be in the same spot consistently. If it was, there'd be a bug there. Okay, I just saw a light blink on and off down that. Yeah, I just felt the drops. Yep, right here. Yeah, I felt it over here too. It's not raining. That's a new one. Yeah. There is a localized liquid falling, presumably rain. I don't know, but it's it's completely localized in front of where we're seeing the light. We stand in front of the light, we get hit with little droplets of water. There's the light again. If we move away from it, we don't get hit with the drops of water. That's so weird, Tim. Right now, I'm telling you, we're getting wet here in front of this light, and if we move to the other side, we're not getting it. What are you smelling the bridge? Uh, something sweet. I saw the light. There's a light two, three, four, five, six times. Whoa, right here. Just water coming down. Yeah, that's it's just right there. It's I'm getting it too. It's hitting me also. Yeah. I'm this is bizarro. That is weird. Over here in the woods. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Black, dark, don't. Yeah. Yeah. Dark, like, dark enough to see it against. Yeah, like the don't don't drop it just dropped off the bank. Yeah. This sucks. I don't like this at all. Whose idea was this? <laughs> Sorry. Another mess I've gotten you into. That's alright. I, I will in and go. He's the wizard. Eat him. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like, yeah, of course I can't even see the trail right now. Like, I'm just seeing. I don't, I've just seen mist. Yeah. All I'm, seeing. I'm, like, literally walking through a fog right now. Are you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, like. Um, like, I can barely see you right no, now. No, yeah. No, it's completely... I missed this thing. Oh, yeah. All right, as soon as we get there, we're wondering if we're going to see that light again. And it's like, oh, I saw the light. And then we started seeing the light. There's a little bridge to cross over. Just a little. Yeah, it's little, just a two steps. There's a culvert there, so yeah. they have a little bridge there so you don't trip over the culvert. You hear me mention that there's a thud before you, you step on that bridge. I was able to capture that thud. You know, again, this is pulling it off the recording. It, it doesn't sound... And the, these sounds never really sound as impressive in the recording as they are when you were there. Mm -hmm. But I did catch this thud that I said, like, you know, how oh, I heard a thud before you stepped on the bridge. So let's go ahead and play that now. And then the other thing is that you had talked about, I think before when we were there, the first time you talked about hearing this like sharp whistle. Yeah, I heard it a couple times, I think. And then when we came back through, I actually heard it. Because I said, Did, was that you making that whistle? And you were like, no. That's the whistle so I heard. So this made me feel better because you actually heard it for once. Yeah, cause <laughs> I, I thought, I was like, was that you? And it seemed, like again, while we were there, it seemed very loud and very apparent and right next to us mm -hmm. kind of thing. On the recording, it's so short. Like I was able to pull it out. It's so short. It's, it's just like a millisecond. It's a very sharp high whistle i swear it didn't sound like that at the time like i don't even know if it was that short i don't know even know if i would have picked it up you know what i mean mm -hmm. but we'll play what i was able to 
pull out the recorder. You have to listen close. It's, you know, it's just a very, very short, sharp whistle. Okay, the last thing I really wanted to talk about is this rain, this, this water. It's not, it wasn't rain. It wasn't rain. No. This wetness that I felt one single drop of on the way up as we're back the second time. And I think we spent a little more time there. The yeah, we were time. hanging out there yeah. more on the, on, the, on the return. On the return back through. And I started feeling it again. And, I'm, and I, I finally mentioned, I'm like, I'm getting wet. And it's only in this one location. And I know people are going to say, well, it was dew coming off a tree. It was rain. You guys didn't realize it was this, it was that. There are trees around, but where we were getting wet, there's not a tree directly above us there. No, because we specifically looked for that. Yeah. It did not have the weight of a raindrop. When you get hit with a raindrop, even a drizzle, there's some weight to it. You can feel Mm -hmm. it. It was almost as if these drops were materializing on our skin. You would suddenly just feel wetness. Yeah, I had one that hit me on my left hand, if you remember. Yeah. It was like... It felt like a big drop, and then I went to feel it, and it's like it was dry. So you you felt the drop hit you Mm -hmm. like rain. See, I wasn't even feeling the drop. Like I felt like wetness appear. Yeah, I would just feel like wetness. It wasn't sap because it wasn't sticky. It wasn't thick. It was very. very I know what sap feels like when it hits you. Yeah, it was very light. And we stepped away, what ten fifteen feet, and it didn't happen. No, it was just in that one little circle. Probably stepped back in. I think it was what like three feet wide, about five foot, something like that. Something like that. It's right in front of this this area. This little area. We'd step away. We'd step back in, and it would happen again. I didn't feel any weight to the drops. In other words, I didn't feel them like hitting me like drops. It seemed to me almost like there was just a drop of water on me all of a sudden. You know what I mean? That's that's what I meant. Like it was like a big like a a wet spot, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it's and I'm like, huh? And you go, you know, you naturally go to wipe it away, and I felt nothing. Yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, it was really weird. This is really strange, and I asked some people about it. I believe I asked Brother Richard. I had blessed myself with holy water before this walk, and I was like, is, does it have something to do with that? And he said, no, I don't I don't think so, unless maybe, you know, the other was sort of trying to imitate what you had done before the walk, you know? Because mm-hmm. I went right to, like, is it trying to, like, wash off the, the holy water I blessed myself with or something like that? And he was like, no, no. He's like, I think it's maybe it was trying to imitate what you had done, right? I asked Josh, and I think Josh said, you know, there are some— Poltergeist accounts. Yeah, I told the. Uh, I think Barbara had told me the same thing that there are evident like puddles would appear on the top of a on a ceiling, ceilings and stuff, and yeah. drips of water would fall down. But there's yeah. no broken pipe or anything. Right. Or yeah. You'd have a puddle appear and then it'd disappear. Right. But it's always been inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. Think, but poltergeist yeah. stuff in the woods. I mean, you know. Well, why not? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I mean, we had every other poltergeist phenomenon in the woods. I'm sure there are skeptics out there who are going to say, well, you didn't realize it was dew coming off the tree. You didn't realize it was raining. There skin. wasn't no rain hitting the, the tree leaves. We would have heard that. Mm-hmm. Like the size of the wet spot that appeared on my hand would have been a very big raindrop. Yeah. We didn't hear rain falling around us. No. Didn't feel it hit me. No. Didn't. Um, there wasn't nothing in the ground. I mean, there was no, like, puddle or anything right, like that. Right, At this point, the creek isn't close by this, so it's not like there's, you know... Oh, we're, we were nowhere near a source of water. Yeah, yeah. I know it's easy to write this off when you weren't there, and it just sounds like, oh, uh, you guys are, you know... Yeah, there wasn't bird poop on me or anything yeah, like that. Exactly. There'd be a lot of birds. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> there would be multiple birds. <laughs> Flying over us in a circle. But, uh, yeah, so I, I genuinely think this was something weird. If it was just the water, fine. But it was the water with the light, with the whistle, with the smells, with everything else. Oh, it was multiple things going on. That's what makes me think, like, okay, there's something to this. It was just another odd thing amongst all these other odd things. Is this related to what Kevin talked about from 1978? Who knows? I don't know. We went out there essentially looking for where, where his encounters happened, not knowing we we wouldn't get on the land, but figuring we could get nearby. Yeah. Because he talks about the rail bed, which is now the rail trail. And the tracks are still there, by the way. So there is... The railroad track. Yeah. 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 So, because some people, you know, you say railroad trail, they, the tracks have been pulled up. Oh, no. They still run this. Yeah. They still run it. Yeah. There's yeah. steel there. Yeah. Iron there. Yeah. 
only thing we can do is go back. I think we need to poke at that cave a little bit more, Mm -hmm. see what it is. I think you had done some research on, you know, just like local caves and stuff that you sent me. And I think we determined that we think it's it's an iron mine Mm -hmm. where this was. But again, Kevin told that story of a, of a cave that went way back that the old timers told him about that they dynamited, you know, to close it up because they didn't, something was living in there or someone. <laughs> they must not have liked that person if, well, if it yeah, was yeah, someone. I'm thinking, I'm thinking if it's a human, you don't. I, I know. Yeah. You don't dynamite a human in a cave, even in the, you know, 40s or whenever this was supposed to have happened. Is it related? I don't know. Is it because we went out there specifically looking for where his encounters happened? I don't know. I don't know why. This happened. If you asked me before we went, would anything happen? I would have laughed. On the rail trail? No. We're just going for a walk. Yeah. We're just going to see what we can see. We did run into what one guy biking through in the dark. Yeah. 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 Other than that, it was pretty empty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the only thing we can do is go back, explore that cave. Maybe some people will hear this from the area. Maybe we can get some more stories yeah. from the area and uh, see what other weird stuff we can dig up. But it was certainly an interesting night. Way more happened than I ever thought. All right, Chad, thank you so much. Oh, not a problem. And thanks for listening, everybody. I said I wanted to do a special each week leading up to Christmas. So for this week and until the next episode drops, which next week's Thanksgiving, so it might be either before or after Thanksgiving. We'll see how my week goes. I'm going to try to get it out before Thanksgiving. But from this point until the next episode, whenever that drops... Order two t-shirts and we'll throw in a tote free. Two or more t-shirts, we'll throw in a tote for free. While supplies last, we don't have a ton of totes. So this is while supplies last. And it is the tote of our choice. It's going to be dependent upon, uh, I think we have more of one design than another. You do have to mention it when you order on Etsy. Order two t-shirts and in the notes say, hey, I want, I would like the free tote. The reason for that is then we know you heard the show and we can kind of keep track and see how many people are placing orders that way. It helps us kind of figure out where our orders are coming from. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Chad, thanks again for coming in. And we'll be back soon with more Strange Familiars. Strange Familiars is a production of Dark Collar Arts. Intro and background music is by Stone Breath. If you want to hear more or purchase music, you can go to stonebreath.bandcamp.com. Strange Familiars is on Facebook, facebook.com slash strangefamiliars. We're on Instagram, at strangefamiliars, one word, no underscore. Please follow us. <laughs> We're on the web at strangefamiliars.com. And as I said before, for merch, strangefamiliars.com slash merch.
Oh, 